Uh, let's move on to the wall. Build a wall. Trump's efforts to get full funding for a wall on the border with Mexico resulted in political fights that saw the government shut down in 2018 in lieu of signing a funding bill that did not include the wall. Trump eventually declared a national emergency, allowing him to move a Defense Department spending to wall con wall construction. Was there some sort of emergency like you know, up up before the 2018 election, I remember uh, hordes of caravans of Hondurans were going to invade us. Yeah, the invasion. Are they not coming to this shithole anymore, or is it just uh, well, that? Well, no, Trump took the money, and he built the wall and increased border security, mm -hmm. so they turned around and went back home. He won. Right. Yep, we won. And then Mexico paid for it by building their own wall. Wrong. Oh. Detailed US you didn't get that right? No. Detailed U.S. Oh. government uh, data about Trump's border wall project obtained by the Washington Post shows the administration. And this is why he, Jeff Bezos, is Washington Post. These people who report facts like this drive him crazy. And again, it goes back to what we talked about earlier in the show. The bullshit artist doesn't want light exposed to his bullshit. And so the press is a natural target because they expose his bullshit that's why politicians always beat up on the press because as you can hear throughout this entire episode trump has said one thing he wants you to think one thing you repeat that stuff like oh the wall's almost complete or oh he's the greatest tax cutter in american history you repeat that politician's bullshit while rejecting the facts presented by a washington post and so, yes, the media is corrupt, and yes, the media has problems, but it doesn't mean that it isn't all bad, because then you're just relying on the bullshit of a politician, which is completely stupid and anti-intellectual, and libertarians are better than that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the Post shows the administration is far from delivering on its promise to finish more than 500 miles of new barriers by early next year. Though Trump had insisted Mexico would pay for the project, it has been funded entirely by the United States government at costs that reach nearly $30 million per mile in southern Texas. So far, the Trump administration has spent $15 billion. I will, build it, I will build it so cheaply. I can build a beautiful wall. What a wall. Uh, the White House is planning to divert an additional $7.2 billion from this year's military budget bringing the total amount of money available for the project to 18.4 billion dollars enough to complete nearly 900 miles of new barriers by 2022 of that just 5.1 billion has been authorized by congress now reinhold give me a refresher who has the purse string power in the constitution which branch of government so as i remember it the House of Representatives is supposed to be the portion of government that all spending bills originate from. And all spending is to be done there because that was the will of the people. That was where they, they entrusted that to, to the House because the House was the closest to the real-time representation of what the people wanted. Exactly. And Trump is trying to take that power for himself, as we saw recently with an, an executive order. Um, <clears throat> so I was trying to be uh, funny with that. Then I realized I just wanted to give the right answer. Yeah. yeah. The right answer. Uh, <laughs> At so, what point does it become cheaper just to buy Mexico? I don't know. We should Maybe. annex it and be, you know, make it a United, uh, a new state. I mean, that's, well, yeah. That's the way you do that. You create it as the demilitarized zone if you're really that worried about what country did he say he wanted to buy? Oh, Greenland. He wanted he wanted to he wanted to trade Greenland for Puerto Rico. <laughs> oh, and oh, and people deal. make a joke about this. And recently we found out that he was serious. <laughs> he actually looked into what it would take mm -hmm. and tried to make the deals, and he was rebuffed by Denmark, who Good. actually owns Green Greenland right now. I think Denmark does. Right. And they uh, just in, laughed at him. Which, in just uh, a few moments, Ryan Hall, I'm going to ask you about uh, property rights and 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 HAPA arguments. So uh, mentally okay. be prepared. Uh, all right. nearly, nearly all 216 miles built since Trump took office replaced outdated or dilapidated fencing. So all that, all the stuff that, oh, fi he's finished all these miles. He's updating dilapidated fencing and then claiming that is new wall. Uh, again, bullshit. 
Only about three miles of new border wall system has been constructed in locations where no barriers previ previously existed, according to Homeland Security's June 19th status report on the wall. Trump's administration says only three new miles of wall has been built. Woo! Um, Reinhold, don't you need a strong national border? Because without it, you don't have a country. And if you don't have a country, you can't properly protect property rights. So therefore, immigration is incredibly important. So why is a left libertarian like you uh, against building a border wall? Um, so the problem with the border wall is that that it that suggests that the government owns land that the government is control of that land uh, instead of the people who actually own the land. Right. Um, so the people, there are a lot of people on the border right now in Texas, especially who don't want a border wall. They don't want to stop immigration because they work with these people all the time and they want them to come over and help fill jobs and do things for them. So it's turning Southern Texas blue. Uh, all the border counties are blue now um, because the the government can't when the government tells a property owner what to do with their own property that's basically your neighbor telling you what to do with your property that's your neighbor telling you uh we don't like that you have your door open and you're letting those people in so we want you to stop doing that and they're coming over with guns and making you do that as opposed to saying look let's you know if we agree to that and the property owner says hey i am on the border of this country uh, go ahead and put a, put one up and then we can, you know, have that border there. Fine. Let them do that. But that's not what's happening. Right. So um, the, the problem then comes into you have the rest of the country, people in Indiana, people in uh, South Dakota, Montana, telling people in Texas and California how they should run their states and how they should run their properties. Right. And what they should do with their properties. Right. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, and Harry, go ahead. Add to uh, that. I was going to say, like, and the yeah, because there's, you know, um, what Ryan Hill's point, like, it's not all the people up in these other northern states are like, hey, close it. It's also people like, I, hey, I need those, I need immigration open. I, you know, no one's going to, you know, pick strawberries for like $5. Open it, open that damn wall up. But if you let everybody in, mm -hmm. as evidenced by Europe, you let everybody in your culture will be greatly diminished diminished reinhold yeah that's not how history has proven out to be uh his, history has shown that the more cultures you let in the more robust you become the more uh the better you become look at what happened to this country and explosion that it had when it was uh, had no immigration policy whatsoever anybody could come here up until the the end of the 18th uh, the 19th century there were no laws against people coming here and working. You know, they weren't allowed to become citizens unless, you know, they met certain criteria. So therefore they couldn't vote in the, in the type of government, but they were allowed. There was no stopping anybody just coming here and setting up a shop and buying some property and mm -hmm. starting a business or working for somebody else who wanted some employees to work for them. That happens. Uh, and be, and we became the greatest, you know, industrialized country under those under those auspices right mm -hmm. and as we've increased and increased uh, immigration regulation we're, we're losing manufacturing we're losing that um ability to to really handle uh the needs of the country the, the more see the more people you bring in and this is why i find interesting is everybody's like well if we bring all these people in we won't have jobs for everybody and so well as you bring some if somebody comes into the pro in the country they're going to need a place to stay they're going to need food they're going to need mm -hmm. uh a housing mm -hmm. well you just created jobs for all those people who do all that stuff to yep. generate more housing and more and create more food and create more clothing money then goes into those people's hands mm -hmm. and the pie increases it doesn't mm -hmm. get cut up yeah, they get less the right. evidence. And you can go back and listen to Harry and I talk about uh, DACA back when we did that episode or read our show notes on it. 
when you look at the the money that is generated by the DACA kids, which was like what, like ten million people, or it's it's not a it's not a significant amount of people. Uh, I don't remember the exact figure, but it was like, like a trillion dollars. I think yeah, they generated eight hundred eight hundred yeah. billion dollars a year, and if you sent back that like a million or 10 million people or whatever it was, you were going to lose a trillion dollars in the economy out of, uh, out of new purchases. So, you know, you, if you look at uh, women going into the workforce, for instance, the, the fear of women going into the workplace was that it would take jobs that, that men did. What ended up happening is you had brand new industries being created, things like the nonprofit industry or the expansion of the healthcare system. And so you didn't, you didn't, yeah, you had men. So the, so the replacement theory of they will replace us, they will blah, blah, blah. It's, it doesn't make sense. And it's not borne out by history or statistics. They, they, and so uh, the reality is, and libertarians, the paleo libertarians, I guess I would say, is just get comfortable with multiculturalism because the reality is millennials are 40% mixed race. And that's only going to increase. And there are different cultures in the world. And, you know, there's you're thousands not- of different cultures in the United States. That's what people I don't understand is everybody's talking about the culture Before of the United the States. Unum. Thank you. Do, I mean, what how I, you don't mean the model uh, country. Yeah. Um, out of one, out of one, one out of one, many, out of many or, one. Well, yeah, many out of many, out of many one. one. It, meaning the diversity is the strength of the United States because all these yeah. different cultures come here in a like people ask all the time, what's the most libertarian country? I, I will say the Internet, but you could say the United States because the early with one glaring, horrifying, tyrannical oh, exception, you. the United States was uh, a, a libertarian experiment in that many different cultures came together and created the strongest economic system ever without a lot of constraints from the federal government and, and uh, from state governments, really. And that's really how America turned into America until, you know, the Vietnam era when you started to see a lot of federal intervention into everything. And then now we're not, right? So well, there was a little bit after the Great Depression that was experimented with and implemented. And then that was built upon during the the vietnam era and expanded on with nixon so everybody thinks that johnson's the one with the war on poverty and so johnson made a speech where he was going to be be the war on poverty guy and implement all these programs to eliminate poverty from the united states and so people then key back on that and say well that's the reason everything went crazy and we had all these all these uh, government involvements into business but the thing is is that johnson never f- did anything with that he made the speech and then nothing and nixon came in and is the one who started implementing all of that so um uh west writes and i apologize for covering your face harry as a native texan i can tell you we don't have an immigration problem we have an entitlement problem many of us texans are not for a wall because it doesn't accomplish anything we want to secure our border we need to fix work visas and immigration systems uh darla writes immigration is completely different now than back when america wasn't overcrowded America can't grow landwise. People are still reproducing and living longer than ever because this is the problem. That's sort of the Lebensfrau uh, <laughs> argument. We need more we're labor. Not, we're not overcrowded. I don't. It, if you look at the density, pop, population density, um, yeah, and third party just mentions it. The it, you can fit like the entire. It, if we had the population density of Paris. We could fence the entire United States into the southern part of Texas, right? Just in that population density, right? So there's these po- there's these graphs that show the population density if you have different different countries' population density in the United States. We are so open. There's so much land. There's so much area uh, mm-hmm. that this idea that we're overpopulated is is just crazy. Um, there, there's concerns right. about resources, but we're the biggest exporter of all these resources in the world with the, the food and uh, all this stuff that, mm-hmm. yeah, we're even the biggest exporter of, of oil now, I think. So why aren't we able to handle more people? I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me when you look at the math of it. Right? Well, I, uh, go ahead, Harry. 
for him. I was going to say, and and with our economic system, we are able to use the resources we have correctly. It's one of the beauties of capitalism. It's it's the capitalist system of uh, using resources which have other uses that are scarce. That's it's what we're doing, and it's the reason that China has to keep constantly expanding and doing things because mismanaging of natural resources. And other reasons, but the majority is that people wouldn't want to come here. The reason right. they want to come here is because there is opportunity, there is mm-hmm. a place to live, there is a place to grow, and we see that. Right. Yeah. Uh, our the, our farming techniques, everything like that, allows us to be able to feed and export. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. E- 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 so I I drove out um I, I drove out towards my ex in laws yesterday, and I haven't been out there in forever. And it's uh, about three or four miles. And, and it's right outside of downtown Indianapolis. Like you're 10 minutes from downtown in this particular area. Uh, it's, it's Acton for those who, who know Indianapolis. And uh, there's nothing out there. Like it used to be cornfields when we'd go out there uh, 10 years ago to, to family holidays. There'd be nothing out there. I'm driving out there yesterday, there's all of a sudden within a two-year span, there's a Kroger there's a McDonald's, there's a gat, like it, all the, like this little town sprang up and I live in a part of town. Um, well, this is sort of the history of suburbs. So where I live, I've lived here around 10, 15 years since 2007. And, uh, it is the second largest population of Chin outside of Burma. There are Christians who are persecuted by the Buddhists in Burma. So they come here, seek asylum, move into this area. And I have watched as the white people in this area have moved from here and expanded eastward into the more rural areas. Uh, and, you know, I went to the laundromat to, to wash uh, comforter last weekend and, and just hung out. That laundromat 10 years ago was a lot of white people. Now it is a lot of chin. Doesn't matter to me, right? Like, you know, I, I've enjoyed getting to know this population of people over the last 10 years. Um, but that's that's sort of how suburban sprawl works, right? Like, and that's that's part of the criminal justice reform argument is that as you know, if the chins start to show up and drive around in the white area, though the that's where the tickets start getting uh that's why you know Harry gets pulled over in Acton and I don't. Um so to kind of help police some of that stuff. But my point is that you have a lot of expansion, a lot of area like there, there, you know, uh, Darla made the point. Nobody wants to live in North Dakota. Yeah, but there's lots of people want to live in Indianapolis and they're willing to drive 30 minutes to downtown Indianapolis if they work or even an hour if they want to live more in the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's plenty of room in this country Uh you know, we're the third largest country in the nation. You know, not everybody wants to live in, um, you know, downtown Indianapolis is a great example. Like we really have had a 50 year rise from Indiana place to Indianapolis and, uh, you know, 41,000 new jobs created over the last 50 years. We now have 41,000 people working in the hospitality and entertainment industry. So we're hurting right now a lot, but um, the convention business and and sports, big game sports, you see a lot of, you know, the, the Indy 500s this weekend or the NCAA is headquartered here. Um, and that, you know, that has spawned a downtown, a rising of a downtown, right? I don't like going downtown anymore because I don't like traffic. Um, but I will go downtown because it still is easily accessible. There are new ways to to build a city. So I just don't agree that 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 we're out of room. I, um, go I ahead. Have, yeah, I have forty acres that yeah. I live on. Mm. So you just gifted you know, it. If we have more That's demand for more room, yeah. well, no, no. If we have more demand for more room, the property prices would go up. Yeah. I would make money by selling off some of that land, and if I felt like I didn't want to live on this land anymore and go somewhere else where it's more rural and I wanted to go to Montana or South Dakota to retire, then I could sell it and I could get split up into 40 or 50 different houses, one acre each, right? 40, one acre properties. Um, let me take away five acres because it's a five acre lake, but mm-hmm. you, you have that built, you have the houses built around that. You could have all of this taken care of. I mean, that's how you expand that out. And then I, if, if I really want that space, then I can go somewhere else where the space still is, is needed or wanted. It, it's, really it is, antith- it's really antithetical to liberty because you hit on something. The, the property prices go up. And, and it's a principle in history uh, that the more 
economic prosperity there is, the more people there are because people feel safe and comfortable reproducing. So food, you know, it's the Malthusian trap. And, and so you have the less food, the less people, the more food, the more people. And if you live in a libertarian society, if our argument is that by moving towards a stateless society, there will be more prosperity, there will be more people. So it really is an undercutting of the future that we say this this closed off protectionist mindset that that closed border libertarians will also often argue it has some contradictions in it that uh, that won't play out over time. Like the the adoption and, and I'm not saying libertarians, I'm saying the alt right, for instance, they have adopted politics and the mindset of the the European right, which is it. it like Bismarck is God tier, right? Because Bismarck wanted to build a power state that conserved the power of the Junkers and kept that predominant culture in place, the nobility in place, and was willing to fight with aggression any progress from classical liberals in the in the uh, Prussian state. Well, the alt right. That's why they talk about monarchy a lot. Right. They want it. They want to eventually they're going to go to the monarchical system and they want to uh, protect the property rights of the existing power, because a lot of those people aren't smart enough for liberty, aren't smart enough for uh, economic opportunity is sort of the underlying thing of what an alt right thinker generally says right so they're eventually but, going to end up and that's why they love donald trump because he's willing to give it to them is i need to fight the left because we need to conserve that predominant culture and predominant economic system and libertarians reject that wholeheartedly in, in the tradition of classical liberalism we say you know out of many you develop strength through diversity and the the market processes are enriched by people with many different experiences because one person who comes from a different culture can add to a project or a market process that a person who has a hegemonic worldview because they're only around their own kind may not see. Right. And the other argument I hear too on, on immigration is that we need to keep uh, the labor pool smaller so that prices, wages keep up. And that if you bring more people in, then you're lowering wages for everybody. So you're you're costing people money, and it, it just goes to me. It goes against the whole idea of free market. Right? You have a free market of uh, of work uh, of of labor, just like you would have a free market of other capital. Um, but why would we want to protect that? Why would we want to pay more for products so that people could have a higher living? I mean, isn't that no different than having a uh, minimum wage law. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the effective difference that you're having right there? You're, you're, you're artificially manipulating as opposed to making a law that states, but you're still doing it through law. You're still artificially manipulating those wages to be something that the market would not demand if they had all the resources available to it. 